Welcome to your four-minute guide to Slovenia. Starting in the capital of Ljubljana, it's a fairly small town, so it's easy enough to get around on foot, but it's also pretty easy to rent a bike, which is very popular. There's a Roman wall, and there are old Roman ruins scattered throughout the city. Downtown, the main artery is a spot called the Three Bridges, where three bridges cross the river. Here you'll find people congregating or just sitting and people watching. Because the city spreads out along the river, you'll find lots of cafes here as well as shops. And with the river being so important to the city, there are plenty of bridges ranging in style. Some are decorated with things like the dragon, which is the symbol of the city of Ljubljana, and others have more modern traditions like padlocks left by couples, as well as the occasional fish head. Sitting high above the city on a hill is Ljubljana Castle. You can either walk up or take the funicular, but you'll definitely hit this spiral staircase on your way up. To the top, you'll have a great view of the castle itself, as well as a 360 degree view of the city, the hills surrounding it, From Ljubljana, it's just a couple of hours to get to the coast. There's not a lot of coasts in Slovenia, but what there is is very popular. Izola is one of the main towns, and here you'll find people walking on the rocky shores, or at a makeshift beach, or just running, or going for a bike ride, or even working on their boats, or just watching the harbor view. The neighboring town is larger, it's called Koper. And here there's a really important market. And walking through town, you'll see symbols of when the city was once part of Venice. If you climb the clock tower in the main square, you get a really nice view of all of the red tiled roofs in town, as well as a great view of the Adriatic. It's just a couple of hours north to get to the Pistonia uh, Caves. Inside you catch a train, it's really fun, but you definitely want to duck if you're tall. And you've got a good long time inside to wander around and explore the stalagmites and stalactites. From here it's just a couple of kilometers to the Pradyama Castle. And inside it's got rooms set up in how they used to look. But what's so unique about this castle is that it's actually built out of a cave. And you can get inside the cave as well as the, the traditional rooms. And once you're in the cave, you're likely to hear some pretty incredible tales of what actually happened in this cave. North of here is Vintgar Gorge, which is incredibly long and incredibly beautiful, and it's a great place to go for a hike. And it's just outside of Bled with its famous lake. Lake Bled is definitely known for this small island, which has a church on it and you can take a small boat and head and investigate the church if you like, or it's pleasant enough just going for a long walk around the perimeter of the lake. Up on the hill is the castle, and it's worth going, if nothing else, just to check out the view of the lake. And the final major town in Slovenia is called Maribor, and it's up north, and here you've got a lovely square, it's a nice place to go for a walk, and it also has the world's oldest uh, grapevine. And that is your four-minute guide to Slovenia. For more, check out minibeartravels.com.